friends, it is another food preservation day. The harvest is coming in hot and heavy. So let's take a look at what we're gonna do today. So as you can see, I've got more rampicante squash. I think I have that one given away, so I may not have to mess with it. I've got a gallon of green beans that need to be snapped and blanched, and I'm gonna put them in the freezer to freeze dry. Potatoes are gonna sit there for another week before I put them in the extended pantry. And I have a boatload of tomatoes so I've got a couple ideas first of all I'm gonna make my sauce which you know there's too many to do much else with but then I'm gonna try something new okay so I almost forgot to take you along for this I got one jar done already I am making something that I saw Stacy from that uh, um, yeah, from Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. Okay, it looks like my head's gonna be cut off, but that's the only way my camera will, will set right now. Um, I don't have you on a tripod, I have you sitting on the stove. So anyway, I saw Stacy um, fermenting tomato sauce. And basically, it's just chopped up tomatoes in salt and basil and garlic and you just shake the bejeebies out of it. So let's do another one. I had planned on doing two quarts and I'm using a lot of my Little Gardener's Delight tomatoes. These are some of my favorite tomatoes because they're bigger than regular cherry tomatoes. Um, so you actually could, you know, slice these up and put them on a sandwich if you needed to. They're perfect for salads. They're, you know, a couple of bites if you're just eating them. I'm going to quarter these. And I also have some of those yellow tomatoes that God created for me. Um, I, I said in one of my last videos that I really loved those little yellow pear-shaped um, cherry tomatoes and I didn't get any this year volunteers and I don't have any seeds and I just asked God to please give me some I didn't get any but what I did get was two Juliet volunteers that turned out to be yellow and they taste just like my yellow pear-shaped um, tomatoes so I'm I am over the moon ecstatically happy with that. All right, you want to make sure that the tomatoes you're putting in here, because you are fermenting them, they need to be clean. So you have to wash them well, and they can't have any bad spots on them, and they need to be nice and ripe because you need that juice to make this work, to make it sauce. And I would say you could use these as diced tomatoes or as sauce. Now, I will say that it's this is a little different, and that's why I'm only going to do two quarts. Um, I know we'll eat them because we love tomatoes. But um, as far as making tomato sauce goes, um, this is a little different because you don't cook it. Um, it's raw. The, fer the ferment I suppose you could cook it afterwards, but you would lose all of your fermentation um, benefits. You know, all of the health benefits of fermenting would be gone once you heat it. So basically the gist of this is you're going to heat your pasta and season it up and butter it up really good and do whatever you do. And then you're just going to pour this room temperature over the top. Again, I'm not sure about that. I, I may need to heat it up, or we may need to eat it in a different way rather than over pasta, or, or it may be perfectly great with hot pasta and this being room temperature, 
um, it may just be beautiful. So we'll see. Let me go get a couple of different kinds of tomatoes in my sink here. I have a bunch that I've washed and I haven't carried over there yet. So I'm going to put just a few of those yellow ones that I was telling you about and a few more really nice ripe cherry ones. But in the but first, I am where did I put it? Put it away. That's where I put it. So first I'm going to throw in some garlic. Now normally for this I would put fresh garlic in instead of the stuff that's already in the refrigerator, but I don't have any right now. Actually, I take that back. I have a lot of it in vinegar in the refrigerator, but it's been there a while and it's starting to get soft, so I don't want to use that. I'm going to use that. And I am going to add a little freeze-dried basil into that. And then I'm just going to kind of push that around there and then I'm going to finish filling. And these are really nice and ripe and I am quartering even these small ones. Um, first of all they're a better bite size but also I think they'll make more juice that way and that is the name of the game. And you'd use, I have everything everywhere but where I need it. Like I said, I almost forgot to film this at all. So, you know, I kind of didn't, didn't plan this well. All right. So your quarts take four teaspoons of salt. And it needs to be unprocessed, meaning not iodized. It could be Redmond's Real Salt. It could be Himalayan Pink Salt. It could be kosher salt, um, even canning salt. But, um, and I'm using pink salt. And I don't know how many I just put in there. Two in so far. Whew, I could have, I could have messed that up. Because I sure wouldn't have wanted six in there, and I sure wouldn't have wanted only two, because that would not have been enough to ferment. So I'm going to just continue to fill this up. I put two in there so far of salt. I will, and the reason I just did two was because I wanted to uh, make sure it dispersed well throughout the whole jar. Almost got enough here. A couple more. Just I'm trying to find my my reddest, most ripest tomatoes. And see, these are a really nice sized cherry tomato, aren't they? All right. That is probably good. So, so far, I've put in basil, I've put in garlic, I've put in half my salt. Now I'm going to put the other half of my salt. And again, I'm using pink Himalayan. You do not want to use iodized salt. So the main thing is um, you want it to not have iodine because iodine will... Um, mess up the fermenting process. Okay, and then all you do is just shake. And you shake, 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 shake. And the 
point of shaking is not only to get it all mixed up, but to create juice, to pull the juice out of those tomatoes so that you've actually got a sauce going on here. Okay, then you're going to leave them sit for a while and you're going to shake them really, really good again. Now this has probably been finished for maybe six or eight minutes and see all the liquid now that's in there. And I'm just going to keep shaking these. And see, I've got juice all the way up to, to right here. So... I will continue to shake these a couple of times more and uh, get that all going and uh, leave these just sit on the counter for two or three days and then you either refrigerate them or put them in a cool basement or wherever your cold storage is. So I'm just going to set these over here. And I will be shaking those throughout the day. All right, now I am in the process of making more tomato sauce. I have um, I have lost track of how much tomato sauce I've made this year, but it's been a really good year. I planted. Oh, I don't know how many I personally planted um, that I grew or that I, I purchased a couple, but I grew um, from seed most of my tomato plants this year. And, um, or I bought from a, another homesteader friend who, who start, did tomato starts this year. And I think I had about 15 of those total of different things. And then I had a variety of, I don't know how many, hundreds <laughs> of, of uh, tomato starts that most of which got just pulled up and thrown away. But many I went ahead and either left where they were, depending upon where they were, or I um, transplanted them. And... So I ended up with about 35, 33 to 35 tomato plants. And well, it's only Bill and I. Um, my kids who live in the attached apartment, um, they eat tomato sauce, like with spaghetti and such, but they don't use a whole lot of it. And they don't eat tomatoes at all. So um, I kind of went overboard on everything, but that's okay. I would love to say that I have two years worth of all my vegetables because you never know when you're going to have a drought. Look at Texas, look at California, look at all the, the southern states that went through heck this summer. Um, we had a few weeks of drought, which did affect the garden some um, as far as, you know, how much it was producing, but we were able to water and, and I don't think the farmers suffered too much. We came out of it early enough. Um, it was not a long-lasting true drought. It was just several weeks with no rain. And, um, and we have had ample rain since. So, not an excess, but enough for the gardens. I've watered maybe twice in the last month, really. I haven't really needed to. Um, and now I've, I've watered my pots a little bit more than that, but honestly, I haven't done a whole lot with them either, and they're doing fine. So, um, so yeah, but what if, what if, uh, you know, we have a year like Texas? I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure that those folks are hoping, I hope they do, they, they either have two years on the shelf or... Um, they're going to be able to have a long enough growing season to pull out of this and get a year's worth. But um, that's my goal, is to have two years worth of green beans and tomatoes and things, um, squash and things like that that we get out of the garden. Pickles and, you know, all the things. And um, that's...
that's my goal. So this year, even though I overplanted, I'm sure I'm not going to overplant as much next year because I plan on adding more cabbage and broccoli and things like that to the garden. And um, uh, I'm going to plant, um, I bought some Missouri Wonder beans seeds and um, I got that recommendation from Appalachia Homestead Patero now, I love the rattlesnake beans I they have produced very well for me but they did kind of peter out during the you know, six weeks that we didn't have much rain. And um, I did keep my garden watered, everything did fine. But for some reason, because they were along the back fence row, um, I didn't water them at all. And they suffered. And they just kind of quit producing. But they started producing again after it started raining again. However, I missed out on that whole six weeks worth of production. Those things usually produce from, and they're about fizzled out now, they're starting to die off. Um, <clears throat> I'm still getting about a gallon every three days, um, but they, I normally get that every, every day almost in normal times, and if I had kept watering them, I'm sure they would because they were so full of blooms, but um, that was my fault. I just didn't I didn't have or have to water them before, so I, it didn't occur to me. I thought they'd be fine. Well, now I know. I also um, planted this year, as well as last year, uh, Blue Lake um, whole beans. And they are usually prolific. And it is the end of August, and they are just starting to, to do anything. I mean, honestly, I probably haven't gotten a quart of beans off of them yet. They are starting, they're full of blooms, and they are start, starting to see a bunch of little beans. So over the next few days, I should be able to pick a bunch. But um, they are normally only about four weeks behind my rattlesnake beans, and my rattlesnake beans started producing the 1st of July. So, um, and they usually go up until frost and they are petering out on me. And I know that's because I did not water them like I should have. So live and learn. Next year I'm going to plant uh, Missouri Wonder beans as well as my rattlesnake. I think I'm going to not, um, not plant the Blue Lake next year because honestly I hate picking those things. Those, I, I have a tendency to break out something fierce on anything with kind of furry leaves and um, I mean it looks like my arms, especially my right arm because that's the one I'm reaching for and pulling and, and um, it looks like my arms are just covered in poison ivy whenever I get done and it lasts for two or three or four days and I have to wear long sleeves and tuck my sleeves up underneath gloves and it's a royal pain and the rattlesnake ones don't do that to me and I don't know whether the, the Missouri Wonders will or not but we're going to focus on that and the rattlesnake beans next year and give the Blue Lake a rest. So anyway, that what's going on and what's what what I'm gonna do now my as, I, as you can see my tomatoes are producing like crazy my beans were doing pretty well um, my greens did well this year and my um, broccoli and cabbage did not it got so hot so early and um, and I had them covered, but even though I had them covered, those doggone um, cabbage moths got in there anyway. And um, 
I just chewed them up. So, I, and I didn't, and I got a late start. So not only did I get a late start on that because it was cold late this year here. Um, and I should have gotten them out early because they'd have done great, but I just didn't get garden out at all until, I always wait until after Mother's Day. And, um, and so next year I will have all my brassicas out way early and all my tomatoes started earlier in, in the greenhouse. And I bought, I don't have an actual greenhouse. I bought at Aldi of all places, a couple of six foot by six foot walk-in plastic greenhouses. And I mean, they have a little metal frame and, and they're, but they're plastic. And um, hopefully they hold up for a few years, but I bought them, believe it or not, they were like 80 bucks when they came out. And um, then I discovered them on the shelf a month or so ago for um, 12, like 12.49. So I bought two of them. And then I also bought two at original price of like 20 bucks a piece of the, I think they are three foot, two or three foot deep and four foot long so that I can set those over seedlings in the early spring. And um, they are the little, little row cover type greenhouses. So they're made out of the same material as the green, the little walk-in greenhouses, but they're shaped low to go over, um, over your uh, raised beds or over your rows, whichever. So anyway, that's the plan for next year. So I'm going to continue on um, and then we'll get to the rest of the vegetables. I have to go out in the garden. Oh, I am making sauce by the way. I guess I said that. But my sauce always has a lot of vegetables, onions and peppers and um, zucchini. Um, I have all kinds of rampicante squash ready to dump in here. and. Um, that's the end of my rampicante until the fall harvest. I have a few out there, but I'm going to let them go so that they can be winter squash. And because um, this second round won't be on the vine long enough for it to become winter squash. So um, I'm hoping for a few more of those. I have, oh, guys, a butt ton of um, Canadian crookneck. Now this is the first year growing them. I've never even tasted them. I hope like heck I like them and can figure out all kinds of ways to um, eat them. And I will, I will get creative with that. I feel like it's really an important time to um, learn how to use things that maybe you normally wouldn't use. Um, learn how to cook in different ways. Learn how to preserve in different ways. Um, and, and, you know, learn to grow different things and learn how to eat them. So that's my quest this year. That's what we did with the Rampicante squash. And I was very pleased with that because we like it better than zucchini. Next year, I'm not even messing with zucchini because the Rampicante and the um, Canada Crookneck are so prolific and so um, resistant to pests that I didn't get any um, vine borers this year. And I always have vine borers. And I, I mean, I was ready for them. I was ready for them. I was watching for them every day. I had my solution. I was going to inject into the plants. Um, my sister was like, you're crazy. You're like, out there with your garden you're gonna inject your plants but um because she said where are these needles for my zucchini and um anyway she, i was prepared for them but i did not have a one and um but that includes in my zucchini or my summer squash too i didn't have any there but i had 
not a tremendous, eh, a pretty fair amount of uh, squash bugs. I still have them, as a matter of fact. And, um, but not so overwhelming that they've just taken over. But that's because all I have left out there are the, are the Repicante and the um, Canada Crookneck, and they are so pest resistant. I've been finding bugs, I have been finding eggs, I, I kill both whenever I find them, but I haven't been like on the hunt like I normally am with zucchini because they're so destroyed so quickly. And um, they don't seem to have any effect whatsoever on them. Now, yes, they can tear up a leaf, um, but the plants are still healthy and strong. Um, the, the, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the fruit. The fruit hasn't been touched. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just going crazy out there still at the end of August. So um, I'm very pleased with that. Okay, I am going to take a pause, clean up, get the rest of my veggies out and get this sauce going. I'll be back when I'm ready to do that. All right, so I just went out to the garden and got some peppers. These actually are red sweet peppers that haven't changed yet. They are they were beautiful. I hated to I really hated to pick them, but I am completely out of freeze dried peppers, which blows my mind because I use them so much. Um, I gotta have some. I just gotta have some, and I know that I will not be able to grow enough to keep us in peppers all year long. And so, this Friday, I am going to hit the Amish produce auction and hope that they have peppers. They should have. Um, I hope I'm not like a week or two early. I think we should have them. I had one nice size onion, so I'm gonna have to add some freeze dried onion to this. So my roaster is not as full today as it usually is. If I'd have waited another day or two, I'd have had a lot more ripe tomatoes, but I also would have had a lot that were gonna go bad. So I've got some peppers and, and one onion. These are the bases, I call the butt end. Um, but it's the bulbous end, bulbous end where all the seeds are of the Rampicante squash. I just scooped the seeds out for the ducks and chickens. Um, I had three big butt ends, and I cut them all in half, scooped the seeds out all except for one half. I just took it straight out to the chickens, and I have a big bag of the, the seeds and the inside guts of the squash in a bag in the refrigerator to hand feed the ducks, and they love that. All right, so that wasn't enough onion, so I am going to dump a goodly amount more. I also, my celery is not ready, so I'm going to use some beautiful freeze-dried celery. So that's it for the veggies. Now, whoop, I started to season it. I'm not ready to season it yet, not until it cooks down and I can kind of mush it up a bit. All right, so that's it. I am going to turn this on 350, cover it up. And as it, um, you know, cooks down and starts to get juicy and soupy, then I'll keep stirring it uh, occasionally and just letting it go. And I will probably turn it down tonight to about 200, get up tomorrow morning and blend it all up, season it all up. And this time I am going to um, freeze dry the sauce. Um, so I will finish, I have half pan, I have 10 half pans, I wish I had 20 of them, but I have 10 half pans and that's what fits in that um, freezer. I don't have any freezer space um, out in the garage in the two freezers out there. So I have to make do with what I've got. <clears throat> I share that with my daughter and son-in-law. Not a lot of it, I mean they have a little freezer of their own, but um, you know a couple of shelves is still when you got stuff like this this time of year, it's a lot of space that you just don't have. So anyway, um, 
yeah, I'm going to snap green beans. I'm also going to blanch and freeze them to freeze dry. I'm going to slow down on canning now because I have cans out the or jars out the yin yang. I still have to box those up. I always put them back in the boxes they come in. I tape the edges, all four corners, with um, uh, packing tape so that they're sturdy. Otherwise, they pop right off when you go to pull them or whatever if they've got jars in them. But I have got jars I don't know what to do with. So it's time to stop stacking the jars. And so freeze drying is uh, a whole lot more, you know, it just doesn't take up the space that um, canning does. So not to say that I'm done canning for the year, I won't be, but um, I'm going to try to like switch my focus over to more freeze drying. So that's it for today, y'all. Was there anything else? Oh, yeah. We got to remember to shake the sauce. I'm actually going to leave them right here on this center island so I don't forget to do that a few times today to make more juice. And then again, they just sit for a couple of days, um, two to three days, and then you refrigerate them or you use them right away. Okay, so I just um, tried this um, fermented uh, tomato sauce for the first time. And basically all I did is cook my spaghetti, seasoned it, put some butter with it. Um, first put butter with it, seasoned it, put some Parmesan on it got it all mixed up and then I just dumped the sauce in the pan I will say I had it on low for I don't know 60 seconds or so just because I had it straight out of the refrigerator so I would leave it at room temperature and then I think it would be perfect but I did not really heat this all the way through so it's still got all the pro probiotic goodness but y'all this is flipping amazing I'm going to do a whole bunch more of these. Um, I don't know where I'm going to keep them to keep them cool, but I'm going to figure it out because this will be so refreshing in the middle of winter. I am thrilled with this idea. So guys, try it. You're going to love it. So that's it. So I will see you tomorrow.